Sherry just texted me. Sherry McGugan is my advisor for at the region level. She does say hi. Um, so she was planning on being out at Area 5's orientation. They're also doing one this weekend. So she ended up having really bad migraines, which she gets a lot. Okay, um, I have a couple goodies for y'all that I did bring from people. So, yeah. Um, some of y'all may already have them, but they're a little venturing and then can give you, like, we can give everyone three. So if you already have one, I encourage you to take them back to your council, your crew meetings, or your VOA meetings, and give them to new scouts or Old scouts. Old scouts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So. Older scouts. I'm gonna go back. You say old, but the age limit because we can't. I just mean time, like so current, like. The word's not old. It's ancient. Ancient. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, she yeah. said it's the old scouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Alright, so I guess I'll just kind of start talking while I'm walking around. Um, but who before coming to this orientation understood the idea of areas and regions? Okay, so ten half ten. Um, Alright, so we are in uh, the southern region. There are there's also central region, western region, and the northeast. Thank you. Um, so in the southern region, there are nine areas, just like all have nine. <laughs> just like all have nine uh, councils in your area. Um, I'm usually the average of our councils that each area does have. Um, but we are here. We're in area two. Oh, no, um, well, I'm testing y'all. I know what area I'm in. She's <laughs> from right. um, I'm from area three, so that's the other half of Texas. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk to y'all today about is the importance of councils and council feelings. Because a lot of times people get caught up in the idea that national is the most important part of venturing, which is completely false. Uh, the whole sole purpose of region and national is for us to be a support system for y'all as council. And that's something we really want to make people more aware of now. Um, but not every area in the region is able to put on an orientation like this. So hopefully y'all understand like how awesome it is that you have such an incredible area team that is uh, willing to do something like this and that they are capable and strong enough to do that. So Area 2 is definitely one of our stronger areas in the region and it makes me happy because you know Texas. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but um, a couple like I guess tips I wanted to give y'all. Um, I was a council president to at one point two years ago. So I was the Alamo Area Council President and going into my council there was not a lot of people involved in my VOA. There was very poor adult leadership. Um, so I think like my biggest advice to y'all is when you go back to your councils, you, you give what you give. And what, what I mean by that is that the more effort you're going to put into your council and the more work, the stronger that council VOA is going to get. So I encourage you to recruit people. I encourage you to go back and train your officers make sure that they feel prepared and like they have the right amount of leadership and guidance to go back to your councils and help people. So um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is uh, quality over quantity. So a lot of times in VOAs we don't always have a lot of numbers, but I don't think that's something that you should be discouraged about or upset about because I think the more ventures in our areas that we can get trained, that we can get in contact with, the better the venturing program is going to be overall. And so always remember that, that even if you end up hosting an event and say only six ventures show up, 
be happy, be positive, and make sure that they have the best time that they can have with that event, and make sure that they get all the info they can. And that's going to help us uh, get stronger ventures in our area and really improve the program. So um, always just know that like Amy and I are here for you all. Any questions, even if it's super small, if you have any problems, um, we want to see you all succeed as VOAs and continue um, to grow. So uh, you all are really like the foundation of our program. So supporting you all is our biggest job. And I enjoy it. I know Amy does too. So. Um, just be, uh, God bless you. Um, the last thing I wanted to say to y'all is um, to be passionate. This is something I always tell my area presidents. Um, and kind of going back to the idea of like it is what you make it. But you should always be positive wherever you are and no matter the situation. Especially because you represent venturing, you represent your council. Uh, you're representing your area, your region, you're representing national, whatever position you are, always have a smile on your face, always be a duck, that's what I say. Mm -hmm. um, and by that, you can use swan, it's a little more graceful, but I uh, mentally always be a duck, and by that I mean wherever you are, you're just chilling, right? All right, you think about like a duck on the water, it looks very, very smooth, very graceful. But y'all know, like, under the water, those little feet are just, like, going crazy, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> if you ever are in a rough situation, don't let your scouts know it. Play it cool like a duck, right? <laughs> All right, um, those are some words of advice <laughs> from me. Um, but I hope that y'all have an incredible year uh, with your council VOAs. And I encourage y'all to recruit people and put on trainings and events for your council. Um, and hopefully Amy and the rest of your area team can try and go out there and support you all. So, yes, um, we will be going out places. Yes. So we all have any questions before I talk about like what region's doing right what's, now? What's happening next summer? Yeah. Right? What's happening next summer? Yeah, Amy, my hat. Quick. All right, so we can move on to region activities. All right. Well, first off, before I get to explaining this hat, um, we have Winterfest, and it, it is a little bit of a drive for y'all, um, since it is just one weekend, but if you can make it, or take off a day of school, because high school I learned, you can just take off days, it's not that Oh wait, but remember I said school comes first though, so, right. Okay, so, uh, Winterfest is an um, event that the Southern Region hosts with the Explorer Scouts out of um, a council in Georgia, but it's hosted in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's going to be in February. Uh, there's over uh, 2,000 scouts there usually. There's hundreds of events. Um, a lot of them are geared towards Explorer Scouts, so a lot of the posts, like the firefighting, police stuff, um, you can like, go and watch them do their events. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, Southern Region will be there. We can come out and meet all of your area officers. Um, the rest of my team will be there. Um, and we'll also like be putting on like fun games and activities for you all to do. And then we also have a banquet, brunch, but brunch banquet where we honor all of our BLA uh, recipients and um, kind of just talk about what the region has accomplished in our term. So that's a really fun event. That is February 7th through the 9th, if I'm saying that correctly, yes. it, it, it's that weekend, where it's fe February 7th, 8th and 9th. Um, but yeah, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, it's at the conference center there, um, and the region puts on events. Uh, the <laughs> orange banquet is a good one to go to. Yeah. Mr. Bershion, are you going to come on? Okay. We can. Okay. By the way, uh, Jada represented Area 2 at last year's Winterfest. Yes. Uh, and I think you had a good time. Yeah, Jada, did you have a fun time? Last last year was my first Winterfest. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was really good. So it's really different because there's explorers there, and you kind of get to see what their program is all about. And if you need a break from all the amazing exploring stuff, you can always go into town. Yeah, right going down the street. Gatlinburg is like really touristy, so it's super fun. Okay, but yeah, uh, next summer we have <laughs> Venturing Fest again. Um, yeah, so that's going to be June 28th through July 4th. It's going to be our third venturing fest. Hopefully, it's going to be our biggest investment yet. That's a fact. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. We we got to work together last summer on the Bentry yeah. Fest operations team, and uh, we'll be we'll be doing that again next summer. That's why we have the yellow hard hats, and uh, it's a, it's made up of uh, ventures uh, and advisors from all over the country. We've got a great team of people, but. One thing, you, if you're thinking, well, is it worth going? No, number one, here's here's just a couple things to remember. How many of y'all went to the World Jamboree this summer? Okay, how many of y'all went to the National Jamboree in 2017? Okay, how many now? Okay, there's quite a few of you have been there. How many of you at one of the jamborees got to do the big zip? Okay, <laughs> so three of you did. Okay. If you uh, if you go to Venturing Fest, your chances of getting to do the big zip go up exponentially. Okay. <laughs> Plus, remember this: uh, at, at at the summit, uh, there's still some things that uh, that you get to do when you go to Venture Fest that you can't do if you go to a jamboree. Let me give you an example. Last year's uh, this is one of my favorite moments of Venturing Fest last year. So we get there a day about three days before all the participants are arriving, and we're meeting with it's a joint meeting between the Venturing Fest team and the summit team. And the summit shooting sports director says, you guys have a problem, a major problem with your, with the information on your website. Now, what our, we were in operations, we don't deal with websites. <laughs> our deal is, what, what are the things we deal with? Toilets, tents, and transportation. Yeah. And sometimes toilet paper. Mm. So, all right, and <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like, why would anybody want to do that? But let me Super. tell you what. The operations team is where it's at. Venture Fest, if you want to be on the staff. But circling back, so we're in this meeting, and the guy says your website information is wrong, and uh, we have some sharp people. And they go, well, no, it's right. He says, no, it's wrong. He says, what does it say about what you're shooting? And uh, Casey's a competitive shooter. Uh, by the way, uh, Ella here is an awesome shooter too. But in, in Scouts BSA. What, what caliber rifles did you shoot in Scouts BSA? 22s. Yeah. Guess what you shoot if you come to Venturing Fest at the summit? 308, 223, 308, 223, 300 blackout. Yeah, bigger, uh, bigger. Also, I think 50 cal. 50 cal. I think at, uh, at the next uh, Venturing Fest, they'll have the 1,000 yard sniper range ready to go. You get to shoot a sniper rifle at 1,000 yard range in a metal plate. You can't do that at Scott, with Scott's PSA event there, okay? So that sounds like, a, 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 I mean, Mr. McDonald and I, we talked about it. we're not sure we can even see a thousand yards, uh, much less shoot something. So uh, that was that was a lot of fun. So it's that kind of thing, and it's a lot of venturing activity, and uh, not as many people, and so you get to meet a whole lot of folks from all over the country. Yes, and we also have we have internationals. Yeah. We do. So we it'll be kind of also like a little mini world jamboree. Um, we bring in uh, scouts from other countries too. And then the biggest two things I always talk about with venturing fest is. No lines, yeah. usually no lines. Minimal. Very minimal weights, um, so it's like a jamboree, but no lines and only ventures. So I mean, pretty awesome. Also, um, you don't have to cook your food. Yeah. Everything's cooked for you. Yep. You just gotta walk to it. Now so, walk is in. You gotta walk down the hill and then like that. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it'll be it'll be better I'll, I'll, for next summer. All the everybody's gonna be camped at Delta Base Camp. And the dining hall is going to be a Delta base camp. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 So we're not going to be spread out by region? Well, you're going to be, there'll be sub camps by regions. Okay. Southern and Western will be together. Central and Northeast will be together. But uh, we'll, by the way, all of Area 2, we happen to know the guy who is, assigns all the campsites. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so all, the, all of Area Region crews will all be together. And, and we'll have our own little enclave there. Uh, J-Dub did it uh, in, in uh, 2018. He, he kind of kept it together. Wasn't that pretty cool, J-Dub? That was nice. Yeah. So you get to, y'all get to see, so all y'all here, if you go, y'all get to see each other again. We'll all be camped uh, together there. Uh, area 2, the Area 2. And I think Amy's decreed that part of her legacy, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, part of her legacy is at the at the Area 2 Enclave at Adventuring Fest, we will have the tallest flagpole, yes. and, and Mr. McDonald will make sure of that, trust me. <laughs> we, will have, we will have a, uh, a the, the venture, our, our Area 2 Venturing flag at the top of that flagpole, and then we will have the four states flags that represent Area 2. My dad built a flagpole. 
that we have at our house. Can you make the largest? Oh, yeah. 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 We, we put it up in our front yard. Yeah. It was taller than our trees, and our trees are really tall. We'll uh, we'll we'll talk to Mr. Robert O'Neill there. He, yeah. He's definitely uh, someone to, to talk to mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. He couldn't be able to transport it to uh, West Virginia. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we got that worked out. Yeah. <laughs> you come to and you put it up. And, and if, if we need an 18-wheeler, we'll get an 18-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we are. So who all, I'm just curious, who all, who all wants to go to Pennsylvania to, to Pennsylvania Farm? Yeah. 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 Ye
60,000 just in the southern region, you know, and then the entire nation. If I were to skip a level, I'd be missing out on going from a smaller number to just a massive number, and all of a sudden I'm responsible for everybody, but I don't know how to take care of everybody. Yeah, so. I know, um, yeah, it's better. It helped me definitely because I did council and I went to area, and then I decided to move on to region, so it definitely like helps you get used to like your workload and the amount of people you're leading and stuff. So. Can, I, can I just add one more thing about that process that I want to let you know? And it's, it's very interesting. This is again one of the things that we love about venturing, but the I'll just ask I'll ask uh, Ella and, and Amy and just Jada for example, who who has a vote in uh, like when Amy was was the chosen area president you would think, well, Mr. Bush, you must have had a vote in making her the area president, right? The answer is? No. no. So everything is youth selected exactly. in our program. Um, you, as council presidents, will get to pick your next area president. So that power is given to you all. So you all will be asked um, near the end of y'all's terms, or our terms, um, to be on a call to help select your next area president. And then it kind of moves up. Like So for region levels, all of your area presidents pick your president. Yeah. So um, adults have no say. I don't think they're even allowed to talk on a call. They're just sitting in to observe um, and it's all you play. So yeah. It's youth choice is why everything's selected. So. All right. Um, do you have any other? Yes. Then was the national president? Yes. Um, it's a little different at a national level. You have a couple more representatives. I think it's two from each region. Uh, so you have two representatives from each region, and it's usually the region president uh, if they aren't designed to run. And then there will be one other person, and I believe region president picks their representative to go with them on the call. So, but it's also all you selected at a national level. So, yeah. Do you have any other questions? What would, did you, you picked your vice presidents, correct? Yes. Was there anything that you would recommend for those people that want to run for vice presidents? Anything that you're looking for when you're looking for vice um, presidents? I, I mean, I read over your resume, but I also make sure to call like that council and talk with people. Because um, like a lot of times, I don't know the people that I, I'm looking at. Um, to be my vice president, so I kind of call and try and get a sense for how that person is, um, not just leadership-wise, but socially, I think is a big aspect to make sure that you have a really smooth running team without drama llamas and whatnot, so, um, yeah. 
Um, my, I would just recommend um, doing your best in the position you're in now and working on that. I think as long as you do a good job and you are interested in moving up, um, build a good resume, and yeah. Do you have any advice on that? Maybe? I do. So on the topic of resumes, when you're a, when I was picking vice presidents, I had to read like six resumes. So on one hand, it's good to stick out, but you'd be surprised just having like decent grammar made me about a hundred percent more likely to totally finish your resume. Um, that might yeah. just like be me. Also, so you don't have to answer questions um, <coughs> that are kind of attached to your resume, like why do you want this position? Um, what are your goals if you become if you get this position? And the way it looks definitely affects like it makes me understand. I guess like your personality too, the way you're gonna like write and the way it's formatted and whatnot definitely mm -hmm. helps. So making it easy to read and very like. To the point, I guess, is helpful for me because I think I know, especially at a region level, you're going to be reading a lot, <laughs> a lot of um, stuff. So make sure you can kind of stand out in that way. Yes. We're interested in helping uh, staff venture fast. Uh, how did we go through can that process? To me, uh, Ryan Davis is the head, is our youth lead for the entire. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So and then he's working with Mr. Lynch. Uh, but both me and Mr. Bush uh, can get you in contact. Also, Mr. McDonald. But you can. Yeah. How much is it to staff? It's five or. Oh, I think it's I think it's two seventy five. Oh, okay, it's cheaper to staff than to go. Yeah, that's two dollars and eighty five cents, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. All right. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Do work. I mean, if you yes. staff. Oh, it's work. work. It's it'll be fun though, and um, yeah. Um. Okay. I have. Oh, I wanted to read um to give you all some inspiration. So just kind of to end before I bring up your area team. Um. So at my home council camp above the mantle in like the main dining hall. This sign sat there for a really long time, and it actually has disappeared now. I don't know where it is, but I want it. Um, <laughs> but um, I have staffed in royalty, like a lot of y'all have staffed with that. I've done. Um, I used to be very active staffing out in my home camp. Um, now that I'm away, I'm not as active with my local council. But um, this sign always helped me and always motivated me, even when I was at a council level um, and was kind of like getting upset, I guess, or like feeling like I'm not capable of doing what I'm doing, I guess. So um, it says, just as there are three R's, there are also three A's of scouting. They are ability, ambition, and attitude. Ability establishes what the worker does and will bring him a paycheck. Ambition determines how much he does and will get him a raise, and attitude guarantees how well he does. So the three A's of scouting, and I don't know what the three R's are, if anyone knows what the three R's of scouting are. Well, the three R's are reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> That's an R, W, and A. I don't know about that, but um, ambition, attitude, and ability. So I think about that a lot, especially attitude. I'll get you where you want to go. So um, if I can have Mr. McDonald and Mr. Bush come up and Amy. Uh-oh. 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 What did uh -oh. you do? Uh -oh. I don't know. So... Yeah, you did. You did something you put before me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... When I became region president, Mr. Lynch, a good friend of mine who... They know. Um, <laughs> surprised me by getting a CSP approved with my name on it. They're very fancy. There's not a lot made. They're very uh, there. It's nice. Um, so they're the nicest gift I have to offer with me today to give to your amazing Area 2 president and Mr. Bush and Mr. McDonald. Thank you for everything you've been, y'all have done to get the orientation running. Use protection violation.
too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, if y'all have any more questions, I'm gonna go sit back down. But I'll be here. Um, so, um, no, nothing else for Ella today? I'm gonna pass these out. Oh, They're my beach and patches for each of y'all.